We're here in Irish at Ford. I'm joined by Rory McKiernan. Welcome to the team. Thanks very much. Excited to be here. Now, you've just joined. What is the plan so for Narrative 4 for 2020? Uh, the plan for Narrative 4 for 2020 is bigger and better all around. Obviously, it's an amazing organisation. It's done great work around Limerick, Munster, Ireland, and it's international now in Palestine, the US, South Africa and beyond. And our plan, and basically my job as European Director, is to expand it more around Ireland, but also into the UK and throughout Europe. So it's exciting times. We obviously need to find the money and the support and the partners and all that. But um, so far, so good. Lots of great people and everything feels like it's ready to go. And how did you first hear about Narrative 4? Um, I heard about it through a friend of mine called Colin McEnumra, who's a world-class musician, violinist. Uh, he was in a band called The Frames that some people may have heard of. Very uh, renowned Irish band. And Colin had spoken... Uh, at huge, hugely passionately about Narrative 4 and I knew that this was an organisation that was different. Um, I knew there was something going on there so I was very curious to find out more and uh, then this kind of job came up and we got chatting and just one thing led to another and the stars aligned so it seems like the right place, the right time and hopefully the right people. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great spot and such a great location here. Um, now, one thing I remember reading years ago was um, how you were up in the big smoke, living the Dublin lifestyle or just living up there and then you packed it all in and you came west. Can you tell me about making that transition? Yeah, well, I'm originally from Cavan and I've lived in Donegal and Galway and so I'm not unfamiliar with the west coast and the west in general, but um, yeah, I was living in Dublin for the last eight years, more or less, and... Um, was running an organisation called Spun Out and then got involved in other organisations such as Uplift and Soar and Goshka and many others. And I suppose my wife and I, my wife's um, a musician, her name's Susan Quirk, and she's a meditation teacher as well, just plugging my wife all the time <laughs> when I can. Um, and yeah, we had a very good life in Dublin and um, great family, uh, great friends, great community. Actually, our family are more elsewhere in Cavan and the West and so on. My wife's from Limerick, up Limerick. <laughs> and um, yeah, I suppose ultimately the rent situation kind of was pushing us like it is hundreds of thousands of people all are and mainly younger people as well and I feel very strongly about that that we can't just pretend that it's not happening and there's a great human toll being paid for that and a lot of suffering and a lot of interesting we're talking about narrative four we're talking about stories but there's a lot of stories that aren't getting told about mm -hmm. housing and homelessness and the pressures but in many ways there's a positive side to our stories that we got to move to Clare or we decided to move to Clare and built a new life there and it's all good and now so I'm between Limerick and Clare and on the road as well so I'm still in Dublin still love Dublin but it's great to be in the west as well. Oh, it's an incredible place, the wild Atlantic waste, you've got the ocean and then you've got the city lifestyle in Limerick as well, so you've yeah. kind of got the best of both worlds. Yeah, well, <laughs> Limerick's the hot place to be now, so uh, it feels a little bit like Detroit in the US, you know, there's a lot of arts, a lot of culture, a lot of renewal, regeneration going on, and Nartifor is part of the regeneration work that's going on all around the city as well. And it feels like, I, I deeply feel that the arts and that element of cultural renewal is really important and I think storytelling has a massive role to play in hearing about our heritage, our culture, but also not just, um, I suppose, native Limerick or native Irish, but all the new communities that are coming into an, uh, Ireland. And we have a, a migrant girls project here in Narrative 4 and it's, it's bringing all the diversity, all the soup, all the knowledge and all the wisdom from all around the world together. And I think that's how we can build um, a better world ultimately is when we get to understand each other and that's ultimately what Narrative 4 is about, is about exchanging stories, getting to understand each other, build empathy, build connection, break down barriers and stereotypes. It's such an exciting time for Narrative 4. Um, now I want to talk as well about some of your own projects because I did sign up to your newsletter now today, so tell me all the stuff that you do. Uh, well, <laughs> probably less stuff now that I'm so focused on Narrative 4, but uh, yeah, I have a podcast called the Love and Courage and uh, I've interviewed some amazing folk like Lynn Rowan, the Senator, Vicky Phelan, who's more or less a Limerick woman yeah. at this stage. Um, Sister Stan, Christy Moore, Luca Bloom. <laughs> so a lot of, you can, there's a slight element of musicians there, but activists, musicians, innovators, thinkers. And I suppose it started because I love reaching out to wise people mm -hmm. to see what they might teach me. And it's a great privilege to have those conversations and now to share them with the world. And I suppose on the side of that, I, I get involved a lot in um, social justice campaigns. I feel strongly about 
It's called a climate emergency, but I also see it as an ecological collapse, and I feel we're all compelled to respond in some way to that. Also, direct provision, I feel strongly that we need to do more to kind of end that cycle of, it's a cycle that goes back decades in Ireland, institutionalisation and, and putting people away and yeah. almost locking them away. I know they're not locked in as such, but I feel we need to do more. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to be involved more in the community in that regard. And uh, generally just being involved in making Ireland a better place and then going to live music and trying to have fun as well <laughs> and not taking life too seriously in the, in the middle of it all. Well, I think it's safe to say that you're in the best city for it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. No, there, it's, it's great. Uh, and, and there's so many writers and artists yeah. and musicians surrounded by, around Narrative 4. And that, I feel like that brings a lot of life and a lot of energy and a lot of sparkle to Narrative 4. And um, I think as we expand throughout Ireland and Europe, I think Limerick mm -hmm. is very much at the heart of it and will stay at the heart of it. And I feel Limerick will really be the European hub for Narrative mm -hmm. 4. Oh, it's so exciting. Such exciting times. Rory, where can we find you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Uh, so I'm on the old Twitter machine. Uh, Rory McKiernan, Instagram, Rory Mac. Uh, what else am I on? LinkedIn, Facebook, forward slash, hope hitching, something like that. Anyway, Google me, Rory McKiernan, and yeah, it's all around the internet. I know, I can't keep up with it, all the madness these days. Rory, thank you so much for trying to Limer Post Show. I'm sure we'll be chatting to you again in a couple of months to see what exactly is going on again. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you.